the Christmas Day sermons for the last couple of years have been about the impact of the present day culture and the concerns that Christians have about the weakening of this special Christian holy time. I don't know how good those sermons were, but they had some good information in them that can give us confidence. So just to jog your memory from 2016, despite the culture, 92% of Americans celebrate Christmas. 96% of all U.S. Christians celebrate Christmas. Over two-thirds as a religious observance. Those are healthy and holy numbers. Christmas is not dying away. Christmas is alive and well. And from 2017, last year, according to the National Retail Federation, 91% of Americans will spend six billion dollars at Christmas. Six billion. And surprisingly, not on themselves. That's not like us here in America. The six billion dollars is not charity. It is free will giving. Giving with the, with the intent to delight another person, to fill them with joy. In a word, not used by the National Retail Federation, in a word, to bless them graciously and freely. So I think as Christians, we may need to relax a bit, lighten up some about the commercialization of Christmas, Christmas is not getting dominated by the winter holiday crowd. Even if the angels disappear from the public square and the lampposts say, Happy Holidays, everybody pretty much knows that even those new decorations point to the old-fashioned story that we heard last night. It's the most wonderful of all stories. How God has made it clear with the birth of Jesus that he wants to do this thing we call life with us. O come, O come, Emmanuel, we have sung for four Sundays, Sundays of Advent. Emmanuel means God with us. Christians believe that life is designed to be lived with God. We were not created with the potential to live life well alone. We can exist without attending to God, but we cannot live life as it is best lived without it. Life is meant to be lived in cooperation, in collaboration, in relationship with the living God. Above all things, Christ the King wants to help us. Just being around his household, being around his people, helps us. Holy Communion helps us. Learning about Jesus helps us. Coming to know him as he acts in our lives helps us. Being here this morning, helps us. And truly the season of Christmas helps us all. From last night's gospel, and the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you Good news of a great joy, which will come to all the people. Good news 
of a great joy. This great joy to the world, of course, is Jesus, born among us. Jesus, whom we discover, is God. Come among us in a human being, whom we saw and we listened to and we talked to and we shared meals with. I do have to admit, it is hard to connect with one whom we don't see, who is spirit, while we are flesh. But as we just read in the gospel this morning, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. This is Jesus who is like us and yet is the revelation of God to us. And as we famously quote all year round, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that we would never be alone. I woke up this morning about 5.15 thinking about that. I wanted to remember what I was thinking, but I wanted to go back to sleep. So I sort of alternated between trying to remember and trying to sleep and hoping not to forget. But what I remembered was How alone I was. How alone I was before I became a Christian. There's a wonderful old Christian hymn by Willie Nelson uh, <laughs> about uh, mothers don't let your children grow up to be cowboys, don't let them ride horses and drive them old trucks. Teach them to be doctors and lawyers and such. Mothers, don't let your children grow up to be cowboys. Because they never get grown. And they're always alone, even with someone they love. I was alone. At Christmas time, I felt profoundly alone. What I didn't know even though I was surrounded by people and family, what I didn't know was that I was spiritually alone. And so, I realized at 5.30 this morning that I hadn't been alone for 50 years. And I was really thankful. It was the best of all Christmas gifts. So, I don't know if you're going to get anything out of this sermon or not. Uh, but I have. <laughs> it is not good for man to be alone. This has always been God's position. All the way back to the beginning of creation. And Jesus promised us, I will not leave you desolate. I will come to you. And he does. And not just at Christmas, as we well know. But for those who do not know, it is good that he appears at Christmas. Behind and above all the commercialization the paganization, the cultural wars, and the political correctness looms 
the figure of Jesus looking down in love. Love divine, all loves excel. Joy of heaven to earth come back. Hidden away in a manger, but impossible to completely hide at Christmas time. So we do not have to be alone. And life can actually be lived well. And this is no longer hidden to us. We now know the answer to the questions of life for ourselves and for the world, for all the people, and that is Jesus. God with us. God with us. Not us going to God. God coming to us. Behold, says John, the dwelling place of God is with men. He will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be with them. And so, beloved in Christ, in this Christmas tide, let it be our care and delight this day to hear again the message of the angels, and in heart and mind to go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, and the babe lying in a manger. Let us read and mark in Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God, and the glorious redemption brought us by this holy child. And let us make this place glad with our carols of praise. But first let us pray for the needs of his whole world, for peace and goodwill over all the earth. For the mission and unity of the church for which he died. And especially in this country and here in this place. And because this, of all things, would rejoice his heart. Let us at this time remember in his name the poor and helpless the hungry and the oppressed, the sick and those who mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged and the little children, and all those who know not the Lord Jesus, or who love him not, or who have grieved his heart of love. Lastly, let us remember before God his pure and lowly mother and all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore and in a greater light. That multitude which no one can number, whose hope was in the word made flesh, and with whom in this Lord Jesus we forevermore are one. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer up to the throne of heaven. And may the Almighty God bless us with his grace. Christ give us the joys of everlasting life. And unto the fellowship of the citizens above, may the King of Angels bring us up. Amen. Merry Christmas.